Hello all, this is JC3 from Is This Real? Do you want to start your own podcast? Then look no further than Buzzsprout.com. We here at Green Hour Media use Buzzsprout, and we love the team at Buzzsprout. They are all about helping you succeed. Buzzsprout gets your show listed in every major podcast platform. Follow the link in our show notes to let Buzzsprout know that we sent you. It gets you a $20 paid Amazon gift card if you sign up with a paid plan and help support our show. Join us and over 100,000 podcasters already using Buzzsprout.com to get your message out to the world. From the Keith Vincent Cale Studios in Patterson, New Jersey, Green Hour Media proudly presents Is This Real? Tonight, we are in our third chapter of season four. We are looking at the Las Vegas shooting. Was it real? Was it a black op? What was it? We're going to find out. Joe, take us there. Welcome, 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 everybody, to another rendition of Is This Real? And uh, like you said in the beginning, Dad, this week's episode of Is This Real is about the Las Vegas shooting. And that was uh, five years ago now, I believe. Four. But, oh, three and, four a, years three and a half. Three now. and a half. Whatever. But we are going to uh, kick off with the YouTube videos. Uh, again, we are on YouTube. We are going to introduce everybody. I'll start from the opposite side of me. Big Joe, Dad. Welcome in. Say hello to everybody. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone out there in TV land, YouTubers, whatever you're doing out there. TV land. Welcome to our program. Mr. West with the do-rag tonight. Yo. Mr. Up? West, how are you? Yo, you said renditions. I like that word. Rendition? Yeah. Okay, cool. Roblox, still writing shit. Say hello, everybody. I'm always writing shit. Hey, yo, yo, what's going on, everybody? All right. So tonight, like I, so, like I said and like Dad said at the beginning... Tonight's episode is about the Las Vegas shooting, whether or not the events happened in which everyone perceives that it did. Um, so just to get a little start off, Dad, tell us a little about that. what happened that night. October 1st, 1970. I'm sorry. Wow. This, this boy is 40 <laughs> years ago. You know what? Shit. It's late, guys. Where It's a really late night tonight, so bear with me. Anyway. It, ha- it happened in 1970. And loosen up that do-rag, West. <laughs> okay. Wow. October 1st, 2017. Mr. Stephen Paddock decided that he was going to go to the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Hotel out in uh, Las Vegas, Sin City. And he was going to take a rifle and take out as many people as he could have. No motive was ever found. Although there's been speculation that, you know, he was anti-Trump, he was pro-Trump, he was pro-gun, he wasn't gun, he didn't want this, he didn't like that, his ice cream wasn't the right, it wasn't cold enough, he didn't like chocolate chip cookies, whatever it was. Okay, problem with that, the problem with that is I'd have a, problem a crime, a crime happened, and we're no closer, cl- closer, closer to the truth. No closer to the truth off the rails already. than we were four years ago, three and a half years ago. So, 58 people were killed, whether you believe that or not. Um, I mean, that's and that's where we're at right now. But that's a fact, though. 58 people were killed. 58 people were killed. Uh, yeah, they buried them. They're, they're yeah, dead. They're, they're, they're dead. You know, and, and that goes, and again, there's dead. conspiracy theories that it was fake blood, it was crisis actors. Who knows? You know, it could be it, it could be a mixture of everything. It could be, you know, people were killed, but then this was a stage event. Nobody knows. It would. It took a while for the Mandalay Bay finally to release the the video footage of this guy getting in the in the in the elevator in the service elevator, which doesn't happen. Right, we will get to that. We will get to okay, that. Okay. Well, I'm just letting you wanted the background. I'm giving you the background. No, I'm, I'm talking about. I I, I meant. Like the 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 events of the night in which they they think. Well, it's a one line fucking thing. I mean, he he took out a window supposedly, stuck his little gun out the window and killed fifty eight people. Okay, the, it's Crickets. from across the street and and twenty three floors high. It's not a little gun. Well, the point is, it was thirty two feet high. Uh, thirty two. Wait, he 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 was like, he shot up the country the the music festival. The music right? festival. The music yes. festival. Yes, that was happening in the parking lot across. And the I believe from Jason the Aldean Bay. was the one uh, the, the performer that was on stage when it was when he started that shit. Oh my god! 
So he's tired. That's, so now that's, that's the... I gave you the background. Let's go into it. Josh, okay. you got anything to add over there? Hold on. All right, I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm not the host tonight. No, because you literally, okay, you could have. have, have you tell me we're going to start this from the beginning again? No, we're not going to start from the beginning, but you could sit there and, and say, okay, this is what happened. This is this, and this is that. Not, not all of a sudden just jump straight into the conspiracy about then. How did he get into the trailer park that way? No, you don't. You don't start it off like that. You give low background, then you go into conspiracy with the next subject. Okay. Now, all right. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. You want to take the show over? Go ahead. Come on. I'm not taking the show Come over. On. I'm Ding just dog, saying. Dominoes. Let's go. I, whoa, whoa! What the fuck is going on? I don't know. Uh, I'm just saying. Just saying. What are you saying? That you have to calm down a little bit. Okay, I'll calm. I'm calm. I understand it's late. I understand you want to go to bed. All right, old man? I get it. But still. Let me tell you something, Tubby. Okay. Okay, no. anyway. Moving on. Give us a little... We got the sorry, background. Dad. Give us a little backstory about Stephen Paddock, Joshua, Yes, please. children, back it down, please. All right. <laughs> so, I'm apparently, not. the perpetrator was Stephen Craig Paddock. Born April 9th, 1953. Um, he is the person accused of it. He is a retired postal service worker. And uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, like they said, it was around 58 people that was killed that night. Um, if you're looking, if by any chance you look up his picture and his mugshot, he looks absolutely horrible. I just want to throw that out there before yeah. we continue. Well, he was up all night. Yeah. I thought, That's obvious. Wait, I thought they shot him. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. How do you get a mug shot if he was dead? I, I what? That's why he what? looked bad. He was dead. <laughs> I'm just looking at an old photo. I don't know what it was taken. Took that picture right before they zipped up that bag. It, it, I mean, this controversy of it because apparently, if he was shot. Um, at least one, I believe one officer was confirmed to be fired like way after the events mm -hmm. um, because they had footage of the cop who froze in the hallway after the events started happening. Um, he was confirmed fired. It was a veteran officer, uh, Cordell Hendricks. On he was and he was fired on March 20th. The Las Vegas police confirmed that. Now, why did they fire him exactly? Uh, Simple reasoning was that he froze in the hallway and did nothing okay. while the perpetrator, Paddock, was firing from the hotel room. I mean, that's a terrifying that's a terrifying moment as an officer, especially if you've never fired your gun before. Just I'm not talking like I'm a damn police officer. I'm just saying that like that is kind of a frightening moment. You're just hearing gunshots going off and you don't know True. where they're where they're coming from and you and you're just there like, yo, I have to I have to do something about this. Yes. And that sort of pressure can really just like put the pause on anybody like true i completely agree with you um unfortunately like they said he was a veteran cop oh uh, so he like been there. he knew he yes. been, he been there done okay so yeah, yes that's the, uh yeah that's He's veteran that's cop. he was on the, he was on that force for years as far as i saw and to be able to freeze just because a guy is firing maybe one rifle out of a window is a little suspicious at least in my book i mean you're a veteran. You've been on the force for years. You've had prior other accounts, and one guy shooting a rifle out of a window, and all of a sudden you freeze. I mean, don't get me wrong. If it happened, it happened. I know everyone goes through different things. Maybe he wasn't in the right state of mind that day. Anything could have happened, but you still could have prevented something, and which well, is why I, I bring that up. He did get fired because of the fact that it was confirmed. He did nothing. He completely froze in the hallway. The fucked up part about this whole thing is that there's a couple questions that even from the jump, when you hear about this, regardless of, of the obvious questions about the hotel windows and stuff like that, which we'll get into. But if we're going to jump right into this, the question that I have is I've heard reports that there, were, there was firing in the hallway at the cops, right? Yes. One cop, Stephen Campos. Or, yeah. I'm sorry, uh, Jesus Campos. There was Somebody was firing him or the supposed paddock was firing at him, right? Yeah, but the timeline is a little strange because initially he was, he was uh, shot six minutes before the real shooting started. And then later on, the story was changed where it was after the shooting. When so the shooting how did my, my question, if, if he if Paddock was shooting, sh shot the cop 
during while he was was like, did he run to one area and then run back and start shooting? Like that's a lot of fucking work. I, you no, know, espe- especially oh. because like with the with the videos to it, it sounds like there's just someone, nonstop, like someone nonstopping firing, and, and yeah. like like something straight out of a movie. To be honest, bro, because like. If you're shooting a gun like that, the most magazines I think you could hold in one of them things is probably like 50, maybe six. I don't know where I'm going. Well, off there's a hundred round mags. You can get a hundred round mags, but they're barrel mags. But at the same time, the same question is you can't, I mean, you can buy, obviously you can buy a hundred round mags from anywhere, but if you're going to get like fucking, you know, what, three or four of them, shouldn't somebody ask questions? Yeah, well, again, if you're if you're going to be there and you're going to like take a one, out a, like a one purchase or something like that, like that if you're going to take still. out a window that weighs eight hundred pounds by yourself, then you got this well thought out. So you're going to be able to make these moves. Uh, if something happens, if somebody knocks on the door, well, you turn around and shoot. Okay, the son so of a bitch. I, I don't know if it was well thought out because, to be honest, the the more I've been reading stories about Paddock and the more I've been reading. You know, just people coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, there was one story that he obviously there's a lot of precursor with him that says that uh, that he was anti government, not anti government, but the, the the government's coming to take his guns. The right. government's coming to take everyone's guns. He was very anti uh, gun control, right. and that um, what else? Uh, he was uh talking about how the government is going to take over and has the rise against anti-government militia movement um so he he he's very he was apparently very big in the militia movement for being a uh what, conspiracist what, no a fucking what was his job a postal a postal, uh, officer. A postal officer i don't know yeah. it, this whole thing just it's it just stinks and apparently there was one uh, a guy that he said, um, ah, here it is. Another man himself currently in jail says he met Paddock three weeks before the shooting for an abortive firearms transaction in the car park of a Bass Pro Shop. The man was selling schematic diagrams for an auto sear, a device that would uh, convert semi automatic weapons to full automatic fire. Paddock asked him to make the device for him, and the man refused. At this point, Paddock launched into an, a rant about anti-government stuff sl- slash FEMA camps. Paddock said the evacuation of people by the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, after Hurricane Katrina was a dry run for law enforcement and military to start kicking down doors and confiscating guns. Somebody has to wake up the American public and get them to arm themselves, the man says Paddock told him. Sometimes sacrifices have to be made. This is apparently from a man in jail that said that he met Paddock, and this is what Paddock said three weeks before the Vegas shooting. Well, again, we don't know if the guy said we don't know if Paddock said it or not. I mean, we're, we're not – we weren't privy to that. There's so many stories that have come out with this from from the minute – you know, I can remember the, the night it happened, you know, like that night the news coverage, you know, they were showing you actual – what it looked like. Shots were being fired from the lower levels of the hotel. Mm-hmm. You know, they were, it really did. Now, whether they were or they weren't, I don't know. Um, but we're never going to find out if there were, you know, they, they say there's no motive, and that's great. But you're never going to find a motive now. You're just going to have speculation like what you just said there. I'm sure there's at least another 10 dozen well, yeah. stories like that. Well, I mean, if you, if you sit there and after this, we'll, we'll just take a short little break after this. But if you sit there and say, you know, what he says, if you believe that this is what the man says, right. that's a motive right there. That also depends, too, the because um, there could be conflicting reports. If anyone knows that he was shot. But there's also reports that he committed suicide in the hotel room. Right. But there's also reports now that, you know, the alleged shooter had a beard, but the but the body that was found was clean shaven. So, again, these are things that nobody's asked. These are questions that nobody's asked. Now, now I mean, in all your research, does anybody, did, you, did this guy have a beard? Nothing that I've seen. Every every photo and video. If you look at the video, and again, we'll talk about this when we get back from a break in that, like a couple seconds. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look at all the video, and I'll go through the video, no beard on the guy. Okay. But like I said, we'll talk about that when we come back from break real quick, all right, guys? Yep.
We'll be back after a quick break. Hey, Ryan. Hi, this is Sarah Palin. Ryan Donald Trump Jr. Hogs to win, see you. Hey, everybody, I want y'all to check out a fellow Marines podcast. My name is Ted Nugent, and I got a call from my buddy Ryan F. Samuels, and he wants me to tell you that he's a working hard, playing all-American son of a who is celebrating God, family, country. Welcome to the Ryan Samuels Show, one of the top political podcasts in the United States, where we have a healthy distrust for government and mainstream media. The Ryan Samuels Show is a raw, unfiltered look at American politics. Hey, how you doing? You like movies? We like movies. You like music? So do we. And books, and video games, and television. We are Multimedia Mafia, and we like to discuss all of those things. And we drop a new episode every single Wednesday. So come check us out, or a couple of guys from Jersey's going to pay you a visit. And welcome back from a little break. Um, so... Before the break, we were talking about the uh, security footage and everything like that. I'm actually going to uh, detail out what the security footage saw. I have a little video that I'm going to play, and you guys are going to see it on the on um, you know, YouTube. On your screen. On your screen, if you will. And uh, for the people who are not watching this on YouTube, I'm going to detail it. Um, so basically, this guy right now, he's getting onto the security footage. I'm sorry, onto the... Uh, the guy meaning the shooter, right? Yeah, the shooter. Uh, he's getting onto the elevator. Elevators, and he's lit, he brought at least from here. They showed already three different clips of him bringing baggage on, and it looks like clothes baggage. Like it looks like like big like big suitcases. Not big suitcases, just normal size suitcases. Not really big. And to me, he looks like a like a husky man. Like he's about what I, I I don't know if you got his uh, details, but I'm gonna say he's at least six three, because he's that. he looks he looks tall as fuck, and he's wearing New Balances, so you know he's a big man. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> I'm wearing New Balances, but I'm not even that big. <laughs> you tall, but anyway, so he's he 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 rented a, a suite at the Mandalay Bay and uh, on September 28th, so three days three days. Four days before, three days, I think, before um, the actual shooting. And throughout this entire security footage, he just looks normal. He looks like a guy. His routine stuff for a casino person. He's playing at the casino thing because they have him everywhere. So if you think, my question is, if a guy, if you know this guy, you know, if you if put yourself in the shooter's position. If you know you're going to do this, why put yourself everywhere? Wouldn't you be secluded? Won't you try to hide yourself, hide your face? Well, it depends. I mean, you, are you out there going, you know, wearing a T-shirt, I'm going to shoot up 58 people in two days? Or are you just, you well, know. No, you, but you want to, like, live life, like, to me, maybe he, at least for me, maybe I would sit there. The, maybe he's giving the, the perspective of just, like, he does. He, he wants to look normal so that people don't go right. snooping around in his room. Yeah. But to me, that shit would, like, at least in my conscious, yeah, I guess see, I'm normal. See, that brings up another point, though. Hold because on, I'm not done with the security I'm footage. I'm sorry, security footage. But... Hold on. So, yeah, he, he's just playing. He sh he shakes a guy's hand, and he was a routine at this uh, a routine person at this hotel. Meaning that, like, for they the knew him for the few days. Oh, for oh, I thought it meant for like the few days that he was. No, there. no, no. He is. He was a routine player. He had a gambling problem. How many? Now you said he was there on the twenty eighth. Yeah, the shooting started on the first. When did he bring the baggage, the multitude of baggage, either uh, the 10, 11 trips, whatever you were telling me? Like, ah, see, they said he checked in on the 28th, but the recording footage says the 26th. See, there's a lot of a lot of back and forth here. Um, this one it says... It even worse. Yeah, they, I mean, they said he was, at, he was at the hotel. But again, if he's a routine person uh -huh. and he's at there all the time, you're going to catch him on security camera all the okay, time. Okay, my question to you is before you go on. So there's a okay, you go on. This is a, this is a, uh, hold on, because I'm, I'm telling you right now what going, your question is. Oh, we're still going to the video. Um, telling me what my question is. Shut up. He's talking to a concierge and he has one of those, um, what are those uh, baggage Car the carts? Baggage carts. Right. Full of. It looks like these are heavy. They look like heavy baggage bags, like they look like uh, plastic things you would ca like carrying okay. cases. Okay. 
Um, and this uh, doesn't give a date, but it's saying the same date. They said over the course of several days, P- Paddock moved over 20 suitcases up into his room. So, I, my, my, again, my question for, for the security and the people at the hotel. Right. If you see someone moving over 20 suitcases into their hotel room, you're not going to go, you're not going to question that. Especially if you're a concierge and you're moving those bags. Maybe they don't give a shit. Maybe they're there to do their job. Yeah, it's and probably go home. it's probably probably a privacy thing too. Yeah, privacy, I mean, that's fine. But in, in okay, you're this is this is a date post nine eleven. This is this is post nine eleven. Seventeen shit. years past nine. That's that's fine though. But people are still as vi- not as vigilant. It's eased. But people are their their minds. Their nine eleven changed everyone's minds and the way they view pe- people. Right. Shit. Okay, I'll give you that. Okay, so. Me seeing somebody, especially if I'm a security guard at the hotel or if I'm even carrying this guy's packages or bags in, if I'm going to his car and bringing heavy, um, like, plastic, car, uh, plastic cases in, right. that to me, the, the one thing, the one case that he's carrying in right now, it looks like it's holding a fucking gun. Okay, but I, what I, what I just want to get this one question out. If you were in there in the 28th, now you're telling me it's the 25th, which makes my point even. Well, no, okay. So he, they said he checked in on the on the 20 uh, on the 28th, but this, as you can see right here, and I'll I'll go back in the video. This it, he's uh, the hotel commissary on the 26th. It says the the date stamp on the security footage says 9 26 2017. Okay. At 11 11 at night. So like again, but if he's if he's a regular there, he's got to be, you're going to see him. It could be. But it's still odd though, bro. Like just, just. Well, no, you got to think about it also. Not the same people are always going to see him though. You but have it, to put that. Per- no, 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 no. You have to put that perspective because you're also talking to a man who worked third shift for like five. No, six, I get that. I'm not years. talking about the people though. You're I'm talking gonna, about security footage. That's what I mean. That you have no idea if people are going to sit there and watch the security footage That's all true. day. You don't know if there's tons of security guards on the premise or whatever the case is. There should be because it's a casino, of course. But you don't know who's watching the tape. You don't know who's paying attention to who. One, two. This is Las Vegas. Well, again, and if he and if he security was a and stuff routine like that, person and pe- like it again. That's why I, I said it depends on who. I if really think person, that, that people knew him too. No, I know that. But on the night that he came in with twenty. Say it could have been a new security guard, but like, oh, to him, that's just a person coming to Las Vegas who is doing some type of traveling, right? Don't forget 20 Las bags, Vegas, though. Las Vegas is a hot spot, just like every other major city. No, I people get that. can sit there and have like 30 bags, it's not that I rare. I never ever in my lifetime talk or saw anybody that had 30. 20 or more suitcases, 10 many, or more suitcases. Yeah, but how many times? If you're a family, that's fine. I get it. But if you're a single guy checking into two rooms, which I've never heard somebody check into two rooms before, especially by themselves. That's the shit that you see in TV and movies. Exactly. I'll take the entire floor. No, nobody, no hotel lets you do that shit. Not unless you're fucking Obama. All right. Okay, you, you check into two the, rooms. The question more should be more. Number two questions. Number one, if he was in there on the twenty fifth or the twenty sixth or the twenty eighth, whatever, you know, the the uh, house cleaning is going to come in to make the bed, unless he puts the sign out. You know, don't disturb. Yeah. But he's not. Basically, he's not like he rearranged that thing. He was building shit in there. People didn't hear any of this. You didn't see it, and then the day, the day the day of the event, he pulls out a, he takes out a window that weighs eight hundred pounds by himself. He was, you know, there was reports that some people heard drilling going on. I'm sorry, I've been to many hotels in my life, not one, not one part. I've never heard a drill go off. We'll be back after a quick break. Hello, nerds. Come listen to the History Nerds United podcast, and let's make history fun again. We interview today's best authors, whether they are established Pulitzer Prize winners or someone debuting their first book. Let us show you that history is not a boring class you took in high school, but a place where the best stories come from. 
And we don't just cover history. We also love to chat about true crime, biographies, memoirs, and so much more. So head on over to History Nerds United and let us introduce you to your new favorite book and learn the story behind the story. History Nerds United. Not only, not only that, but as coming from someone that has worked, like, I guess, construction in a whole, in a in hot spots like or yeah, big like hotel bi- hotels like big that. buildings like that yo if someone is doing work in there those people are watching your every freaking yeah. move bro and they're letting you, and like they they know exactly what you're supposed to be what what you're supposed to be working on what you're supposed to be touching and where you're allowed to just at least just walk oh, they have, have everything else like taped off and just, i guarantee i get and, and, and this is just coming from the uh, i guess it would be the consumer in me or the hotel guest if i hear that drilling and shit like that all night i will fucking say something and have security come to that room and figure out why is there drilling coming from that room? Well, we don't know if it was all night. He could have done it during well, the day. I know, but when still. people were gambling, and you know, most people again, you're you're in a hotel, you don't know what's going on. You hear drilling. You're walking by a a, a, a room and you hear drilling. You know, nine out of ten times, people go, "Oh, there must be doing something in there." Could be renovating. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Unless fine, of but- course, unless of course, it's security guard that's. Doing his job and realizing, wait a minute, they all got schematics and stuff. When that's what I'm saying, are though, done. because my my question, because again, we as and it's a big hotel. Yeah, you're perfect. not going to tell me that there's not going to be some type of and I hate using this. Well, I don't hate using this word, but I don't mean to offend anybody saying that. But some type of Karen that's going to complain about hearing that shit. Wasn't the word I was looking for. Hey, they don't go there. I was gonna say no, there. no, no! Don't, don't, don't you, don't you some, dare! Some type of Karen who is gonna sit there and complain to mall, uh, mall security, <laughs> hotel security, some Paul Blart, yeah, hotel security, about oh, uh, there's a noise above my room. It sounds like someone's drilling. What's going on up there? Some shit like that. You're not gonna tell me not in not post nine eleven shit, not in the 2010s because that that's when all this sh- well, all apparently this- it did. I don't believe it. Okay, so we don't have to ask you that question at the end of the at the end of the show. So. Yeah, I, I, so, and and then the rest of the and video, that, the the part that's just really just crazy to me that just doesn't make any type of sense. One, getting that window out of that out of that hotel yeah. room. That's the first thing. How well, how yeah. is anybody gonna get a window? One of those big, I want to say what twenty by fifty windows out of the damn hotel yeah, room. My that question shit is. is heavy. My question is for that, is, and correct me if I'm wrong, but he uh, again he he did take two rooms, right? Yeah, and I've he pulled that. windows out of both of those rooms. I've never opened a hotel window ever in my life. Am I correct about that, or was it I'm because one was right now. one was a corner room? Both were corner rooms that that were, were like cornered off to each other. I think they were. And then he went to one side, started shooting, and then kind of dipsy doodles ass over to the other side and started shooting on that side. If I'm correct, so he had to take two of those 800 pound fucking windows out of the the. So you're talking about 1600 pounds? Is the okay? The man may be six three and and and, 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 and what? But but it doesn't make any but it doesn't make any type of sense, bro. Yeah, because if sounds, there's because if there's shooting going on, and like you hear rapid gunshots going off, it's if it's one man, just one man. I see. I see if it's just one man just shooting out of two windows. Two windows that doesn't make any type of sense, and you have to reload. And the time, if you're a professional, it probably takes what like 15 20 seconds or something to reload, especially if it's already whatever. Oh, but still, I am so sorry, bruh. I wasn't expecting that. All right, dad, it sounds like you have something good. Well, according to, to a video here, they got they got uh, um, well, there's a couple things. What, what's my hold on? Send me the link to that video, please. Uh, all right, hold on. It's three extra windows, uh, three extra missing windows on the west side of the Mandalay Bay Hotel. And there's a picture of it. I'll send me that photo. All right, I will. Or send me the link to that photo and I'll uh, post uh, it up to our video people. It's actually a video, but the... the, 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 the Las, Las Vegas cover, cover it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's... You'll see it on the thumbnail. It's it's crazy to see that. But again, to, to your point... To Josh's point, how do you get, or, you know, I mean, Eric's point, how the fuck do you get, you know, these windows taken out by yourself? This is insane. These things are weighed, they weigh 800 pounds at least. And if they do, he wasn't doing this alone. Now, 
who else was involved. Because I do believe there was another person involved. That's just my personal. There had to be at least two other people. It's, there had to be at least two other people. Well, uh, well, there's. We're gonna take a short little break in a couple seconds. But there's a couple conspiracies about, and I believe you you said it before earlier, Dad, about the videos of the actual shooting and the cell phone video of the people, right. and questionable things that come from those cell phone videos. Whether you know you believe that shit or not. So we'll be right back um, from this little break. Uh, stick with us. Are you looking for a vinyl LP or cassette tape? 45 RPM? If so, you've come to the right place. Golden Space. We have thousands of titles in stock and ready to ship. Call us at 862-336-2275 or go to our store at discogs.com backslash seller backslash golden spins backslash profile. We can find whatever you may need. We proudly accept PayPal and every major credit card. Welcome back from break, everybody. Um, like we said before, uh, we went to break. We're going to talk about what happened on the floor and the conspiracies of what these camera footage shows. Um, so we're going to play just a 20-second, maybe 30-second clip of this camera footage. Viewer discretion is advised. If this does make you a little queasy, please skip ahead and then uh, we'll be right back so just watch this video and we're going to talk about this alright so you saw that video, and the question I have, and I'll pose this to my uh, uh, co-hosts or partners, whatever you want to call them. In the I video, am a person. Shh. The video that you see, at least from the video that we played right there, you hear the firing, you see people on the ground. To me, and this is just my belief, which proves to me there was more than one person doing shooting that night, at least at the people on the ground. You hear two different sets of firing. You hear the high pitch, that, 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 that. And then right at the same time, you hear a And those are two different guns, people. They have to be. There is no way a gun is going to make that same noise at that same particular time. I guess I, I I can't say yes or no, but I can I what I can say it's odd. I can tell you that much. It does. It definitely lends credibility to two shooters. There's no question. And then the question: If there is a second shooter, who the fuck is it? I think I have an idea of what's going on. Please elaborate. Um. So they say that he used what, like twenty three different guns or something like that, or what was what was no, it? it was um. I forgot how many guns it was. I, I think there was I like three or four. Yeah, I think guns. it was it was three or four main guns and he had a bunch of handguns. Okay, so my only thing that I can think of what's going on with that, why he rented out the second room, is homeboy is obviously there was some government agent or something. I don't know. Maybe it was an. I'm not gonna say it was an inside job, but all I all I can say is that. If he rented out two rooms, one of the rooms had to be built with a with one of those like um, fuck, what is it? like one of them turret things, where it's a remote control, where it's a remote controlled um, a turret. That's what a, it is. A, yeah. a turret, yeah, pretty much. So that was that's the only thing that I can think of. But to get, but to even have access to, or, or, or the access to get to that shit, bro, you have to be government level to get to that shit, or you have to have some serious, serious government friends and black market because that's the other, I'm pretty sure that's the only way you can get your hands on one of them things I don't I don't know well but here's oh continue sorry but um it just doesn't make sense to me how there's two the, the shootings coming in from two different windows and it's coming and, and you and you saw it and you're seeing it happening at the same time like you you, you can't one person is a cape not even maybe the flash can well, fucking do there some was shit also like that, but. reports that you don't hear about anymore but there there are recorded report reports you can see it that people say 
And you can see it in the video that people say there's flashes coming from the second, third floor of the Mandalay Bay also. Yeah, that was all over the news that night. Yeah. It really was. Like that entire night, it was, it was straight up, oh, third floor, second floor, and then the twenty uh, 32nd floor. That I'm sitting there like, okay, so there's definitely more than one shooter. This is a plan to thi- this is a plan thing. And there's something we, there's a video that we, at least I didn't know was out there until I started doing research. Um, the uh, body cameras of the officers that went into the hotel. Right. After, I'm guessing, Paddock killed himself. Mm-hmm. And uh, said that uh, the Paddock has seen motionless on his back with a pool of blood stained in the carpet near his head and a cache of assault-style weapons strewn about. So Strewn about? Strewn. Strewn. That's a word. Like hanging around and stuff? Yes. So what, 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 what did he kill himself with? Do we know? They did not. There's At least I haven't seen the video. Because um, a lot of times when something like this happens and the guy and the shooter kills himself, he's usually tied to a tree with the rifle, you know, somewhere over there laying on the ground. And then that they're telling you that he killed himself. So, I mean, well, the I'll get into that later, but the thing is... Well, there is no later, homie. This is the last segment. Uh, well, okay. Well, then I'm going to... This is my issue with this this whole thing. There is so much here that we can't cover in in a forty five minute to an hour thing. We would have to take a series of shows to do this mm-hmm. because a you have the crisis actor theory, okay, which is a show we'll we'll we're doing in a couple of weeks, right? But I'm, I'm talking about you know things that are going on with with uh, fake blood and fake this. You have another angle which uh, Eric and I were just looking at where it could have been this the second gunman or third or fourth gunman could have been in a helicopter that was above the the venue. Yeah, there was a, there was a video that uh that me and him were watching where it looks like a helicopter is but literally maybe like minutes before the shooting starts taking place, you see a helicopter coming by back like like. If your screen, if this is the hotel, the helicopter's coming in like this way. Yeah. And then you, and, and you hear. Above he- the right, where above, the guy's uh, supposed above, to be shooting. Above yeah. where you hear, and you hear like four or five shots go off. Blah, 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 blah. Like maybe like, you know, like a signal or something yeah. like that. And then you see the helicopter coming back around. You hear three, four more shots. Blah, 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 blah. And then. We didn't get to we didn't get to the part where it starts where where, where, where he starts where, where, or he starts or right. everything starts going down, but that's that's something that see, that's been a, that's also done in, a, in 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 a way too where you know if you're in a crowded place that like sounds that sounds like a military style. Well, if you're if you're in a crowded place like that and you start hearing gunshots, your first reaction is to what? Stop what you're doing and and look around. Stop. And exactly, when you stop, you're 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 a target. Yeah, you're a, you're a, you're you are a deer you then. are a dead duck at that point. You know, providing you're you're in the line of fire. Now, I the, the issue I have with this shooting and the Boston bombing and 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 you know whatever you want to say, whatever the we, atrocities and, that happen. Right, it's all the same mo. The only one, the only person that got away with it was the Aurora shooter. He actually got out of it alive. It seems to me that they all have the same thing. And I think, I, I don't know who's fueling the conspiracy theories, but I think it's basically when, you, when you're when you listening or you're watching a conspiracy theory, it's it's there to, mind, to, to cloud your fucking mind so much where it's basically there's so much shit going on that you're never going to get to the bottom of it. But it all has the same similarity. Okay, you can go, you, we can talk about Sandy Hook, and we will, okay? We could talk about the Boston bombing. You know, it's all the same thing. The main person somehow winds up dead. It's like and it's always killing. He kills himself. Yeah, he kills himself. It's always the same fucking story. So anyway, there's no motive. Well, we're never going to get a motive now because it doesn't matter. He's dead. Now, if, they, if, they, if you people think that I'm a conspiracy theorist, well, I do, I do do my homework and I do put two and two together. And this isn't just based on this. This is based on a lot of different events that have the same fucking mo, same pattern. Okay, people are killed. All of a sudden, we found a gun. We found we found a long rifle in the guy's trunk. Okay, we find a suicide note somewhere else, and there's always. 
plausible deniability there could be more than one gunman, two gunmen, three gunmen. Kennedy assassination is the perfect event. Mm-hmm. And it just drives me wild how we can't we can sit here like we can sit here for another six days and go over the theories and what is possible, you know. But we're never going to get any closer to the goddamn truth because the truth is so clouded with the bullshit that keeps coming out. And it's not only the people that are doing the theories, it's the people that actually perpetrated this that are pushing the same theories. Because as long as they cloud your mind, you're never going to find out what really happened. Like, dude, think about it. It's been four years, almost pretty much four years since and this happened. we just got the, the video from the, from the and, middle and, of the day. And, like, mm-hmm. we're just digging into this because, like, Look how much has happened in the last four years. Yep. No, no, it's just last year alone. I don't think anybody cares about what happened four years ago. You know what I mean? Well, the attention span of the average American is about, oh my God, 30 seconds? I yeah. wouldn't. It's actually, you know what it is? Yeah. Basically, the attention span of us, is, of Americans, are it's between commercials. That's what it comes down to segment of program, commercial, segment of program. That's what it comes down to. That's, That's what, what we our do. Show is, bro. So. We're trained not to pay attention to this shit because it either it's too much to think think about, makes your head hurt. It makes it does, you it, yeah. it definitely makes, it makes your head your hurt. Head hurt. So shut up. Anyway, what have we learned from this? What have what what you know? What have we learned from this episode? Other than it's very late and I'm fucking exhausted. Oh no! The, the question is, is: Do you believe the official story? Of the Las Vegas shooting. And All right, so down. you asked that question. Go ahead. So I'll start off with you. Do you believe the official story of how the Las Vegas shooting, the shooting went down? No. I don't believe any official story because stories are not official. They're not official until you have evidence. And every time these guys come through with these official stories, there's never any evidence. The official story of 9-11, no evidence. But the question is, when when it's gone TV, they'll say expert. They'll, they'll they'll put a they'll put a video up. Experts say it happened this way. But then when there's an alternative view under his picture, they'll put conspiracy theorist says. So the expert is the guy that goes along with their theory, and it's never proven ever. Okay. I know I see you laughing, and that's fine. No, look to your left. Yeah, that's why. Uh, Wes, look for the union leap. Give us a little summary of why. I don't tell little. You believe or don't believe that this is uh, the official story? He do. I said a little summary, so <laughs> it has to be more than two words. More than little, three. Little summary. No, I got you. I got you. Um. And your thoughts on two the broken, in general. Two broken windows, multiple gunshots coming from both uh, from both windows. One person doesn't add up. Thank you, West. Uh, Roblox. He is the Mr. Reader's Digest. Legit. I think there's way too many fucking variables with this story going on. Um, reading from different websites and stuff like that where I probably could never believe an official story if it was one gunman at all uh the windows alone the multiple gunshots and it's not to sit there but like i'm an expert but those are definitely different gunshots different styles listen different sounds say what you want call of duty comes in handy for more than just playing all right okay first of all (laughs) which we are not sponsored by by the way no we're not i actually like legit messed around with guns while I was in Vermont, but okay. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. What was the, there anyway. out of the do besides fuck white women? Okay. Fuck with guns. Yeah, thank you. Can you let him finish, please? Jesus! The multiple gunshots to me alone, rapid fire, the only thing I can think in my head that is logical that could explain that is if he was an asshole who thinks he can dual wield guns. And if anybody knows what the hell that means, you're having two big ass assault rifles in your arms and you're firing them off. Like Rambo. Rambo. Like Rambo. Exactly. There you go, guys. That's, unless you got the muscles for that, you're not hitting anything. You're not going to be out You're not Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, exactly. With that alone, I mean, 
Shout out Sylvester Stallone. I can't, I can't even form any other type of like ideas. The only yeah. thing that may explain something about at least those dual gunshots would be if there was firing in the hallway, but even that would be a stretch because from what I read, the door was screwed shut, so you um, might not have heard anything from inside the hotel. So yeah, it would have to you, be from the couldn't. guy inside the room or multiple men if there was... I, I I can't I just not at all. There's no way in hell you're gonna sit there and get me to believe that one guy did this. And it is an unfortunate event. There should be no reason why 58 people lost their life that day just to invo- just to enjoy a country festival. I mean, I personally fucking hate country, but to each their own. <laughs> like if you enjoy it, go on and enjoy. Still, it. rest in peace, y'all. Yeah, rest in peace. Like there's. I personally hate country. Like. I'd probably right. blow my brains out if I was in a country festival. Okay, but. I wasn't going to go there. Don't be an asshole. God in heaven, please help us. Um, but yes, I, I cannot. I'll definitely say that. I cannot believe any official story whatsoever. I obviously don't because it goes deeper than just Deep. the multiple gunshots, the the window. Really I, I think it goes deeper into the hotel <laughs> staff and hotel personnel alone. I'm sorry to me. Somebody knows somebody who blows somebody and that helped him get to what he, he needed to do throughout hotel. Sounds like a full service hotel. Fuck off. Um because Wow. That was like good. that was a good one. There was so many th- things to add up. I'm sorry, and you say what you want, it could be different people there, but if I see someone keep on coming in hotels with more bags and more bags and more bags, that shit looks like it's carrying a weapon. I'm going to fucking sit there and question it. I don't care who I am. If I'm hotel concierge all the way up to hotel head of security. And it's a it's a casino. So you know cops are there. So it's not just hotel security. The cops have the right to sit there. If they see something suspicious, I'm gonna, they're going to fucking question it. So it, it's, it's definitely... And for him to use the service elevator alone... He has to know somebody. Nobody else can use a service elevator except for laborers, laborers, or the people working in the hotel, which would be laborers. Yeah. Or the people that were helping them. Or exactly. So I think it goes deeper Dave. than just, you know. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it, it's it goes completely deeper than. And I'm sorry we couldn't cover all of this in a span of 45 to an hour, but we like like you said we'd be here forever. Um, but just to close out this episode, I do want to keep, you know, f- uh, follow our social medias, um, you know, follow our Instagram as a real podcast, follow our Facebook at is a real podcast. We do have a green hour media Facebook, follow that too. Um, green hour on YouTube, green hour media on YouTube, follow that. And I, uh, go to our Etsy if you want. And this hat is not, a, this is a very old hat. This is one of our first hats that I ever it's made. It's a sample. It's a sample hat that it's... You know, the hat that dad's wearing, you can get that on uh, Etsy. You get the hat that, well, not that Roblox is wearing, because that's a personal hat. That, that's a custom. my hat. That's, that's a one-on-one. That's a custom piece. Exactly. You can get dad's hat. You yeah. get dad's hat. I got a do-rag on. Yeah. You can get that anywhere. Everybody, all at once, hold up your shirts. You can get shirts. Buy this fucking shirt. Oh, and our mugs on Etsy. And probably gonna be on eBay in a little bit, right, Dad? Yeah, we're gonna we're setting up an eBay account just for our stuff, along with Etsy too, to give uh, people a little. Part this merch. And, and, and our and our prices are very very reasonable. We don't want to rip anybody off. We just want to, you know, we just want to support it. We want to get support here so we can keep this thing going. And uh, you know, yeah. And we have a Patreon. Is this real on Patreon.com? Search it up. And I do want to give a shout out to our first Patreon subscriber. Alex, Sir Alex, um, from the UK, thank you. We love hearing your feedback. Yeah, it was really, really great, uh, dude. And we're gonna be putting on, uh, pa- putting up Patreon stuff. We just recorded an episode of. W- we're gonna be debuting. It's called the High Point with West and EC3. You, that's and we you. just recorded. That, that's, no, you said you fucked yourself up. Man. It's JC3. Sorry, JC3. Oh my god. Sorry. I have a wrestler. Hey, let me ask you a question. He, when he subscribed to the thing, which was really great, I re- 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 appreciate it. What was he? Re- what does he receive other than the the audio? What else does he get with that? I will read you that right now. So on the Patreon, when you subscribe to 
all the regular tiers. Uh, hold on, this is very uh, laggy right now. Uh, let me log out. Damn you, internet! Yeah. Well, you have three different people on right now. <laughs> so we have a five dollar tier, in which you get ad free episodes and uh, behind the scene contents with two extra episodes, and then you have an uh, a ten dollar premiere, which you'll get four extra episodes, ad free episodes. Behind the scene content, you get to request stuff from us, fan requests, and whenever we can set it up, a live Q and A with any one of the members of this podcast. Yeah, that'd be great. And then the fifteen, which Sir Alex um, subscribed to, you get six bonus episodes, uh, ad free episodes, uh, behind the scene content, fan requests, live Q and A, ad free videos, and a T shirt and a mug, all sent to you. And, and, I wish I had a copy of it here, an autograph poster of all of our beautiful mugs. Oh, yes, mugs. an autograph poster. <laughs> of all of our faces. Of all of our faces. So, please, keep subscribing. You get one of these t-shirts. They're nice. We also have, uh, you know, dog tags. Just, just, you know. We subscribe. got a lot of shit. You'll, you'll see it on you'll see it on the Etsy page. Yeah, you'll see Take it. Take us on home, the, Joe. See it on the Etsy page. So I just want to say again, thank you, Alex. Good job, man. And um good night, everybody. Oh yeah, to me. Good night. good night, guys. Good night, everybody. Konnichiwa, bitches. It's Ryu West speaking. If you want to find out more about the Is This Real podcast, follow us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash is this real PC or on Twitter at is this real PC or on Instagram at is this real podcast, all one word. 